right, guys, uh, you probably all are aware that Ryzen's new 5000 series processors on their Zen 3 architecture look absolutely phenomenal. But what we don't have yet is independent reviews and benchmarks uh, because I believe that embargo is still a couple more days out. And these things come out on November 5th, I think, right? Three days from now. Exciting. These things look fantastic. So what I have for you today is some leaked benchmarks, and we have a couple of them. Uh, one is, was posted on Twitter here and gives us some leaked Cinebench 15 scores. And then there was also a post on the Linus Tech Tips forum, and that one uh, I found in this video cards article, but they got it from the Linus Tech Tips forum. That one was on Cinebench 20, and we have some results. Now, one thing that's actually a little interesting to me, but also maybe a little disappointing, is that these appear to both be overclocked results, although at least the one performed um, by the guy on the Linus Tech Tips post, that one does appear to have been done on air cooling, although I don't uh, I don't know if it was like the stock air cooler or if it was a much nicer air cooler, but it wasn't like, we're not talking LN2 or even water cooling. Now, let's take a look at this information. Uh, but also first, I want to do a quick side note. Um, my channel is blowing up completely unexpectedly right now on YouTube. About a month ago, I decided on a whim to start making tech-related YouTube content for fun. I'm a full-time high school math teacher with two kids and don't even have that much time to devote to this, but I've managed to put out a video every day. And um, just over the weekend, I went from like less than 500 subscribers, I think, to over a thousand I've passed this morning. Like, like, I mean, look at this, here's my, here's my YouTube thing. And um, I had a video now with like 18,000 views and I was not expecting any of this. Like if you look at the analytics on my channel, <laughs> I posted uh, on October 6th that this channel is changing. Just let my friends who were subscribed to my channel where I post personal content uh, know that I'm gonna start actually taking YouTube kind of seriously. And you can see my views were basically nothing. And then suddenly I got a little peek with some hundreds of views talking about some big Navi leaks. And then uh, suddenly I, I'm now like going into huge numbers of views and I can't, I'm processing this. Just thank you everybody who's found my channel, viewed it, and especially hit the like or subscribe button because I think what happened is the YouTube algorithm decided I'm worth promoting. And that's based on people who viewed me sticking around to watch the videos, hitting like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much. I'm, I'm still processing this <laughs> uh, this explosion in, in my content. Anyway, it, um, if you're just finding me uh, for the first time, I'm doing tech-related content, especially PC tech-related content. Consider following the channel if you want. Like I said, I'm blown away by this. I'm shooting this video on my lunch break. That's why I'm on a green screen right now. Some of my other videos will be shot at home in like 4K with a little more editing. But uh, on my lunch breaks, I just film live and just go right to the websites and bring you the info. All the link links will be down in the video description uh, so that you can dig into these in more detail if you'd like. So here's the, the review. Now, uh, originally I saw this video cards article with the Linus Tech Tips guy, but then I found an article from WCCF Tech, again linked in the description, that has that leak covered as well as some uh, the, the other leak that I was mentioning. Okay, so let's start with the one from Twitter. So there's this tweet, and uh, the details on this one is the uh, Cinebench R15. Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm a tech enthusiast, not a tech actual, like, amazing expert or anything. And I haven't done a lot of Cinebench stuff myself, but, you know, it's just a CPU uh, test, and there's different versions of it. And in this particular test, we're talking about the Ryzen 5 5600X. Now, this is a big deal because the 600 series of processors are not the top of the line. They're the one that like most people end up actually buying, right? This is the bang for the buck, great performance without before you start getting into the diminishing returns. So this is the one that a lot of people want to actually know about, okay? And this is the version that kind of, and you can tell from the 600 in the naming scheme, that these are the ones that are designed to line up against Intel's i5-600 processors. So the newest version being the 10600. So that's where it lines up in terms of AMD versus Intel. And if you're thinking in terms of AMD versus AMD, if you're ready for an upgrade or something like that, we can compare it to the 
uh, 3600. Remember, they skipped the 4000 series. They just designated that for mobile, and I'm really glad that they're getting back to naming everything 5000 series. Anyway, so the important thing to notice here is that this is running at an overclocked speed of 4.7 giga gigahertz across all six cores. And the post just gave us some number of points. But if you're like me and you're not a Cinebench expert and doing this all the time, the raw score itself tells me literally nothing. So what I'm interested in is how does this perform comparatively to other AMD processors, uh, especially from the, the last generation? And then how does it compare against the 10 series Intel processors. And good news is we do have that information. And if you're interested on what the system was, all that info's right here. You can pause the video and look at that or click on the article and read this in more depth. Okay, so they're using um, Anantech. Is that pronounced Anantech or Anantech? I don't even know. But the point is, using their numbers to stack up against other benchmarks done using Cinebench 15, we get some really interesting information here. So basically, we need to look at the difference between single thread performance and multi-thread performance. Because for a while now, Ryzen has been leading Intel in multi-thread performance, but in certain applications, and especially gaming, single thread performance is more important. And this is the generation where AMD is claiming that they've beaten Intel in single-threaded performance as well as multi-threaded performance, which is starting to leave Intel in a really bad position as far as should you ever consider buying one if you're building a new gaming PC right now? And according to results like this, which once again, this is a overclocked processor, um, but let's look at its performance. So here's the leaked performance numbers, the 2040 on the multi-thread and the single thread at 258. Now let's interpret this graph. What are they comparing this to? So the one above it right here is the Ryzen 7 3700X. Now that, notice the 700, that's the step up from the 600 series, but because it's the three series, this is the previous generation of Ryzen processor. And notice that it's the stepped down, much less expensive model, but it's beating it handily in single threaded performance and almost matching it in multi-threaded performance. So if you're somebody sitting on a 3700X and wondering about the performance of the next gen, you're, you would gain on your single threaded performance by switching, but you would lose a bit on your multi-threaded. I don't think that would be an upgrade, that would be a side grade. Um, but if you're coming from a 3600, which is the predecessor of the 5600, check this out. Um, you'd be going from a single threaded performance of 210 up to 258 and a multi-thread of, of, of 1639 up to 2040. Now, whether or not that's enough of an upgrade to be worth buying for you is a personal preference. Personally, I'd stick on the 3600. That's a processor that a ton of people have right now. That's been the big, like that, it used to always be the i5 that you got recommended for your bang for your buck, buck generic mid-range gaming PC. But lately with, with the Ryzen's, it's been this 3600 or 3600 XT's um, that a lot of people are getting recommended. And so a lot of people have this. And if you think about uh, should you upgrade to the 5600, there's reasons why you might. You do get a significant performance boost, but are, are you unhappy enough with your performance right now to really want to do that? Although there are other reasons why you might consider an upgrade like the shared access memory if you go with an all new AMD system on a 500 series motherboard, 5000 series processor, 6,000 series GPU. I just did a video yesterday about shared access memory if you want to take a look. Anyway, um, how does this perform against Intel? So against the Core i7 10700K, so remember the 10700K, that's your, your step up in price compared to a 600 series. So this is the Intel's higher end competitor than the 5600. This is a step up. These are not supposed to be at the same tier, but look at the performance. Not only is it beating it in, in multi-threaded performance by just a little bit, but it's also beating it in single threaded performance. And remember, that's where Intel used to always hold the advantage until this new line of CPUs. And that affects gaming performance quite a bit. So this is interesting. The higher end i7 processor is losing in both multi-threading and single threading to the 5600X cheaper processor from AMD. 
That is amazing. Now remember, these are overclocked results on this 5600 leak, so keep that in mind. Now perform it, uh, check the performance against its actual price range competitor from Intel, and we're seeing, uh, again, the score of 258 single-threaded down to a 206 from the Intel competitor, and the 56, uh, uh, the 5600X from, from AMD having the 2040 in multi-thread and thrashing this uh, where it only has the 1428. So uh, in terms of percentages, we could calculate this ourselves. I am a math teacher and it's just division, but this article's done it for us, so let's just look at that. So the Ryzen 5600X is 42% faster in multi-threading and 25% faster in single core performance than the Core i5-10600K, which is its direct competitor from Intel. But once again, keep in mind that there was overclocking here. But um, it also, so the 10600K though, also runs at faster clocks and has a higher TDP, meaning if power draws something you're thinking about, the Intel chip's running at 125 watts and AMD's is running at 65 watts. Although again, if this was overclocked, it's gonna be more than 65, but I don't think it's gonna be doubling all the way up to 125. So this is still more power efficient, even running that overclock. Now, um, it's also, again, if we compare it against its previous generation competitor, so if you're thinking about, is that upgrade worth it to you? Um, so it's 25% faster in multi-threading and 22% faster in single core against its direct predecessor, the 3600 XT. Now, if one of the mo if the model of CPU that you currently own isn't one of these listed, you could look up Cinebench R15 scores for your current processor and then compare those numbers and just divide to get a percentage, right? So you could do that comparison yourself. Now, um, Again, we're noticing that it also comes in faster than the Intel i7, uh, which is an eight core, so it has more cores. Um, and this is really impressive, guys, really impressive. And we knew that, we knew that, but so far we had in information just from AMD, we're getting some leaked independent sources here, which is really exciting. Speaking of Cinebench R20, remember I said there were multiple leaks here, okay? So this is Cinebench R20, and it's coming in um, again, with the 5600X processor here. And I believe this is also overclocked. Let's take a look at the graphs and then we will, we will take a look at this. And remember the links in the description to this article if you wanna dive in here in more depth yourself. So again, in this one, we're seeing the same types of performance um, up against these processors, but it's a different overclock, keep that in mind. So again, we got the 10600, the 3600, so these are the previous gen AMD and the direct Intel competitor. Here's our leaked 5600. Again, notice the single thread performance gain over both its direct Intel competitor and its previous gen Ryzen. And look at that multi-thread performance, just thrashing them. And then the, uh, against the previous generation step up from AMD, the 3700X, again, we see it winning, the, the new 5600 winning in single thread performance and almost tying in multi-thread. And once again, beating the step up Intel competitor, the 10700K, beating it in single thread, uh, um, single thread performance and just about tying it in multi-thread performance. This is impressive. So according to those results, we're seeing a 33% faster than the direct Intel competitor and 27% faster than its predecessor AMD model and coming in again really close to the i7 and previous gen uh, 700 series uh, Ryzen predecessor. Okay, here's the overclock information. So that one was overclocked to 4.95 gigahertz, but notice on standard air cooling. And that's really interesting. So, wow. Now, also to note that these look like if you have better than air cooling, that these ones can go higher. Uh, we're seeing reports of 6.12 gigahertz on LN2. So obviously you will not actually be gaming at a six, six gigahertz overclock on any of these things. But interesting to see how far you can push it uh, for the sake of competitive overclocking. All right, uh, my lunch break is wrapping up here, but just remember that if you're interested in this CPU, it's $299. So this is not like some super expensive model. And the uh, here's some Ryzen marketing stuff. Here's the new Ryzen lineup with some prices. Again, you could look at the article or pause the video here. And I'm really excited about this. This generation, the, the Zen 3 stuff from AMD just looks fantastic. 
I've been an Intel NVIDIA user for a long time, and I'm pretty tempted now to, to build a whole new AMD system, and I don't even really need an upgrade that badly. <laughs> but man, is it tempting. Although one thing to consider here, guys, if you're considering buying into the 5, five Series, it, this is now just getting onto me opinions and thoughts here. Um, so if you just wanted the, the results, you know, click off. But something to consider if you're thinking about a new build that I'm considering. This is the dead end for this socket, as far as I'm aware, for AMD. So they've been really good with their uh, trying to support multiple generations of the same socket, so your motherboard being compatible with multiple generations of Ryzen chips. But we are reaching the end of the line for that. I believe that the next set of Ryzen processors will require a new motherboard, uh, with a different socket. And even right now, if you're on the 400 series motherboards, they're gonna require a BIOS update to be compatible with these 5000 series processors that might not be available at launch. Uh, last time I checked, it was gonna be more like in January that we'd be seeing a lot of those compatibility updates. So think about that if you're buying one of these on November 5th, um, whether or not your current motherboard will be compatible. Also, if you're interested in things like the smart access memory, you could take a look at my uh, video from yesterday where I explained that you do need the 500 series motherboard, the 5000 series Ryzen processor, and the 6000 series AMD GPU to make that work. So keep that in mind. Anyway, if you made it to the end of this video, think about hitting the like and subscribe buttons on my channel. I am just blown away, you guys, by the growth of this channel in the last like weekend especially, but I mean, I've been doing this for less than a month. This is mind blowing to me. Anyway, thank you guys so much and I hope you have an excellent day.